Anybody who's tried to test air knows that air is squirrely. Let me show you something really cool. This is called computational fluid dynamics. This set of videos that I'm gonna show in this video are from Saarinen, Kaliomaki, Tang, and Koskela, who are all academic researchers uh, from 2015, and their paper, Large Eddy Simulation of Air Escape Through a Hospital Isolation Room, Single Hinged Doorway. Okay, so just check this out for a second, and I'll explain. On the left, you have the camcorder's actual recording of the smoke that was happening. On the right is the simulation. That's called computational fluid dynamics. So a computer is figuring out where every single one of the particles would go, essentially. I'm sure there must be shortcuts uh, at work here. But you can see the door opening, the door closing, the person moving, and that happens all the time in homes. In fact, we tend to, especially on this channel, get worried about like where the duct work is and where the air flows are so that we can make sure that mixing happens. And one of the things that Attila Novoselic showed in his video from the CIE series that we've been doing, this 31-part series on the chemistry of indoor environments, which if you have not checked out, I highly recommend you watch that. If you're in the middle of this, then you're like definitely prime material for that. There is air movement all the time because of something as simple as like the temperature of surfaces being different than the temperature of the air. Here is an example of someone moving through a door. And this is why, uh, depending on air movement from just natural ventilation or from just uh, people moving in and out of uh, homes is not really dependable, and also why somebody like me who has this perfect house that I've built that's perfectly engineered to have continuous ventilation and all this stuff, and then my kids go through, run through a door, they slam it open, they slam it shut, this kind of thing really starts to mess with this. So all that to say, this is not a perfect science as far as the airflow goes. So watch this woman just move through this door. This room is going to introduce air to this room, and this room is going to pull air back into this room. So the yellow on the right is coming from the room on the left. The white on the left is coming from the room on the right. And you can see that just the door being open and that simple action of moving is partly why I don't really worry in a room like a pantry inside of a home, we don't necessarily need to introduce a lot of airflow if this is gonna be a well-used pantry and people are gonna come and go through this thing, you're gonna get some air exchange. So. This is just a reminder to myself and to all of you that people are one of the main things that we're just not studying a whole lot um, when we're talking about home performance. And it's so critical. So just a reminder, physics is weird. Chemistry gets even weirder. Microbiology is in there too. Don't forget about all that stuff and how uh, mixed together all of our environments are. The pollution in your room has a lot to do with the pollution in my room and your neighborhood and my neighborhood. So uh, I hope that you found this interesting. Thanks again to uh, Saarinen, Kaliomaki, Tang, and Koskala who uh, made these videos possible in 2015. These were in, by the way, season three of Home Diagnosis, which is all about the scientific research and stuff. So if you have not seen that series, please do check that out as well. Comment below if you have anything else to add or if you're a CFD researcher and you want to like correct anything that I said, please do, uh, because I don't know how this works exactly, although it does seem like it takes a pretty powerful computer and a lot of time. Thanks very much for watching. Tune in next time.